Welcome to a lesson on lathe facing. So now that we have some geometry created and the stock is set up, if you don't know how to do that, you can refer to previous videos. I'll provide links to those. Uh, what we're trying to do with a facing operation is remove this bit of rough material back to this face right here, which is Z0 in our setup and in our program. So again, we've got our stock set up established here. Properties are all set. There's your rough workpiece diameter. There's your rough workpiece length. There's how much material we're going to remove in the facing operation right here. And then you can see in the properties, we've got a 1.625 inch chuck jaw length with grip of stock by one inch. So that one inch again being the length from the front face of the jaw to the back face of the material. So if we want to do a facing operation, all you have to do after you've got your stock set up established, but that must be done first, establish your stock first. Once we've got that, select facing operation. We want to pick an appropriate tool for the job and one that you have in your shop. So for the shop here, we have a tool which is uh, OD rough or outer diameter roughing, uh, right hand orientation, an 80 degree insert with a 31 thou tool nose radius. So what you want to do as part of this process is select a tool that you actually have in your shop. If you don't, you can always go into the edit tool menu, which is a lesson for another day. We want to change the tool number to reflect what position within the turret this tool exists. So if it's tool number four in your turret, call it tool four, offset four, station number four. For all intents and purposes at this point in your career, you probably want to make sure all those numbers match. So then we need to decide on a feed rate in thousands per revolution. Uh, for a facing operation, you might want to go with something like 0 0.007 to get a good surface finish and also not apply too much pressure when feeding an X. Uh, a spindle speed, if we're using a carbide insert tool, maybe somewhere around 350 is a good place to start. Again, you can experiment with these numbers if you don't like the surface finish that you get. And then setting a max spindle speed is something that must be done with a mind for safety. So as when you grip a workpiece and you turn the chuck on, um, the force of the chuck spinning causes the jaws to want to separate, which reduces your gripping pressure. So that makes the job less safe to perform, meaning that you want to cap your spindle limit. And I would say somewhere around 2000 for general application purposes. Uh, if we keep it below 2000, we know we'll be safe as the cutter approaches X0 and the spindle speed increases while maintaining your cutting speed. So as a little bit of advice right now, I'm going to suggest turning on force tool change. In this particular operation, it's not going to do anything, but it's a good habit to get into. If you're not sure of when to use this button, I would say always use it as opposed to never using it as a better course of action. We can get into what that button does in a later lesson. And the comment, we'll call this facing, and I will be diligent. Make sure that you name every operation. Uh, you might not appreciate why now, but when you get onto the machine and you have to do some editing to your program or proofreading of your program, you'll really pat yourself on the back for including a comment to state which operation this is. So remember, we've selected a tool, assigned a number, assigned a feed rate, speed, maximum spindle speed, Best check the coolant is turned on. It is. I turned force tool change on, even though in this particular case it was unnecessary, and then I've named the operation facing. So now we're going to go into the facing parameters, and there are only a few points that I need to cover in order to make sure this operation works perfectly, and that will be where we want to finish. So at where along Z will the finish cut occur? Will it be right at Z0? Will it be at Z positive one inch? That can be entered right here. Uh, and then in terms of things that we actually need to change, rough step over, this is where you want to choose your depth of cut. So what is your, what are you most comfortable taking as a depth of cut on the lathe? Um, maybe you work on a machine that's not very rigid and it's not capable of taking a heavy cut. You want to go with something light like a 15,000 step over. Uh, maybe you're on a really robust machine where you can take a really heavy facing cut and you can get away with something like a hundred thou. Uh, for general purposes, let's go with something like 30 thou. Not too aggressive, uh, where stability is a concern or rigidity is concerned, but also not so light that you're wasting a bunch of time and prematurely wearing out your tool by rubbing instead of cutting. And then finally right here, we want to decide how deep should the um, 
finish cut be. So I like to go with about the same depth of cut for finishing as I do for roughing. The key thing here being trying to get a number that is a little bit greater than your tool nose radius. So in this particular case, we had a radius of 0 0.0313. I've gone with 0 0.03 here. It's not quite above. If you want to be very particular, we can go 0 0.033 for a finish step over. It'll ensure we get a good surface finish. And notice here again, all I've changed was turning on rough step over, setting a depth of cut, and then determining how deep I wanted my finish step over to be. I might change that back to 30 thou just for the sake of an easy demonstration. And then I'm going to hit the blue check mark and it's going to generate a toolpath based on the few parameters that we've established. And there you have it. So if we had 125 thou to remove in facing, as determined right here, and we took off 30 thou cuts at a maximum depth as well as a 30 thou finish cut. If we took four 30 thou cuts, that would only remove 120 thou, not 125. So the machine automatically cal calculates to take off 30 thou or a maximum of 30 thou up to five cuts to remove the 125 thou. So one, two, three, four, five. There are all your cuts. The blue lines are feed rate lines, or G01, and then the yellow lines are rapid, which would be G0. And then pay close attention right here. You'll see this line is your X0 axis, or the center axis of the workpiece. And you can see that the facing operation is cut beyond X0. That's to ensure that we don't get a nipple at the end of the workpiece. I would inevitably damage a drill if you had to follow the drill operations, or follow with a drill operation. Now let me show you what happens if we change that overcut amount. If we say overcut by something pretty exaggerated by 0.2, watch what happens right here when I regenerate. You'll notice the tool travels well beyond x0. And that's a little bit excessive. I would say that's unnecessary motion. So going back to the overcut amount, if we had something pretty small, like something just a little bit bigger than the tool nose radius, we can ensure that we get complete cleanup along the face as opposed to something like this where if we accidentally left 35 thou on instead of going beyond x0 you would end up with something like this where you have a potential machine crash let's ignore those warnings for the time being but then you're also left over with excess material that looks like this so that's what the overcut accomplishes it tries to avoid having any excess material so let's say 0 0.035, something a little greater than the tool nose radius. Regenerate. And let's take a look at what this looks like in the simulation. This is one of the checking tools you have at your disposal. I recommend getting comfortable with it. There's your facing operation. If you find that difficult to determine what you've just seen, there's an intersection right here of the X, Y, and Z axes indicating that the face is cleaned up right to a zero position. And then we can take a look at the back plot to watch that motion animated as well. There's the back plot button. All I'm going to do is leave the animation speed right where it is. Let's just hit play and watch what happens. So again, gray is the rough block. Uh, blue are the chuck jaws, and you can see the white lines indicate the finished workpiece all contained within the gray block. Oops, sorry, wrong button. Play. There we have five cuts as predicted. The tool retracts to the tool change position. I'll escape out of back plot. I want to save what I've accomplished. And there you have it, a lathe facing operation.